guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. My name's Alan, I hope you're all doing well. This is the uh, the first one back uh, after the Christmas period and uh, I thought I would make a, a small diorama, like a jousting arena. Um, I'm actually making this piece for a competition that's on Instagram uh, that I take part in, run by Joe from Encounter Terrain. And uh, the idea was to build around a theme. Uh, the theme this month is uh, honor and glory. So a jousting competition seemed Perfect. So let's just crack on with it, shall we? All right, so to start with, I took a piece of one centimeter thick XPS foam to use as the back wall, and I started to texture it using uh, various shapes of bricks, just stamping them into the foam to create that uh, nice staggered brick effect. And then I realized that I needed to put an archway in the middle which would require small bricks surrounding it so I etched those in with a toothpick and uh, made them the grout lines a little bit deeper and a little bit wider to give it better texture. And then decided where the future fleur-de-lis charm would go as a decoration and made sure I had enough room for that. And then I continued with the brick texture using different sizes, different variations of uh, square tubes just to uh, create a bit of variation in the stonework. And once that was done, I took the aluminium ball and added some texture by rolling it over the surface. You can see I've left the archway clear and two lines, vertical lines, uh, which will be replaced with a bit of wood. Now a jousting arena has what's known as a tilt barrier uh, going all the way up its length and this would allow the horses and knights to charge on either side of it towards each other. And I'm just going to make this out of some balsa wood with a little bit of wood glue to make sure it's really really sturdy and I'm just going to let this glue against a nice flat non-stick surface you can use something like parchment paper or something here I have a little bit of a Teflon down so it stops the uh, wood glue from sticking to the surface and you can just pick this thing up nice and flat afterwards I'm going to add a little bit of texture to the wood uh, carving in some planks using a beveling tool and adding a little bit of texture using a wire brush. Uh, Balsa wood's really good for this because it's quite soft and it can really easily take a nice texture. I'm also going to take two lengths of balsa wood here, texture them with a wire brush, and then carefully slice off a few tiny slivers off the edges, and this will give them a much more realistic hand hewn look. And then using some hot glue, I will just stick them down to the form. And I also cut out the archway in the middle as well. And then took another piece of XPS form to use as the base. And I added some hot glue to the edge of the back wall and placed it flush with the ground. using two scrap pieces of XPS form made a kind of backing to go behind the archway because I didn't want it to just be open so that you could see all the way through. Then very quickly made a small uh, XPS form plinth for a potential little trophy to sit on. see there I've added the plinth uh, in the archway. The base of it has been scuffed up with a wire brush and I'm going to try and add some clay to the ground in order to build it up a little bit and hopefully add uh, some extra texture when the fence is in place. But quickly realized that when doing this that this clay just will not stick to the form. I think the form is maybe a little bit too uh, maybe dry and 
very very porous. I'm not sure what the problem was, but either way the foam just wouldn't hold the clay. I tried it both ways. I tried adding a little bit of water and it just it wasn't going to work. So in the end I opted for another method. Good old all-purpose filler. So this is just regular joint compound and filler and just kind of smear around with your finger and uh, work it into the form and it sticks really really well and uh, provides a really good surface for painting and for texturing. And while it was still wet, I added the fence that I made earlier to the middle. And hopefully that would help it stick. Just press it into the filler, and it holds pretty well. I wanted to add a few hoof marks to the ground, so I took a piece of styrene rod and cut a little nick out of the edge. You could also use a bit of a paintbrush. Uh, protect it if you've got one of those handy if you don't have any styrene rods and I just went up and down this thing while the filler was still wet and poked some little hoof prints into the ground and then added a little bit of sand for a bit of an earthy look Now the XPS form on the back wall there is still a, a bit vulnerable so I want to cover that up with some Mod Podge and black paint. The rest of it is fairly durable, it's just filler and wood so that doesn't really need much protection. I just sprayed the rest of it with dark brown from a rattle can and that was enough for the undercoat. And I've done this method a few times before uh, with a much better filming angle, I'm afraid to say. And uh, But this is how I do the walls for pretty much everything that I make. I just take a few bricks, pick a few at random and paint them with some slightly earthy, warmer tones. Uh, this thing's going to get a covering of grey eventually, but these earthy warm tones will hopefully show through a little bit once the wash goes on. So don't be afraid to just make it look a little bit cartoonish and messy. Also then I did the Fleur de Lis charm, which is just a jewellery charm. And I stuck that on with a bit of super glue. Then I went to paint the floor with a nice uh, kind of desert sand colour. So I just dotted this on all over and then used a wet paintbrush to smooth it all out and uh, blend it all in. I felt the barrier in the middle needed a little bit of uh, lightening up, so I added some very watered down Xandri dust from the Citadel paint range. And then a pretty heavy dry brush of grey over almost everything, so the whole back wall including the wood and also the tilt barrier in the middle. This helps give the wood a bit of an aged look, um, you'll find that the surface of wood tends to have a bit of a grey highlight to it and more of a brown undertone. And once that was completely dry I added my black brown wash all over the stonework. Now I added some banners to the back walls, so for this I used some cocktail stick and a little bit of cloth which I just cut out of an old pillowcase and then I added a lot of thin super glue to the cloth 
to help it dry kind of rigid and solid ready for painting. And I painted it in quarters, black and red, and then as you can see a little bit, I penciled on a fleur de lis, so hopefully I can paint that with a bit of freehand. Now I'll be the first to admit that I'm not the best painter in the world, especially when freehanding banners. Uh, so this was pretty difficult. Uh, now we just need to do another one. Great. So thankfully both the designs look pretty much the same, uh, or at least the same as I could possibly make it look. And uh, I just added a few gold trims using a gold pen. I did this on both banners and gave me a nice little regal look. All right, now back to the main piece. I just added a bit of brown wash uh, to the sandy base to really help bring out those hoof prints in the ground. Once that wash on the floor was dry, I added a little bit of PVA glue to the edges and then applied a few different colours of static grass. I'm using quite a lush green here, but I also used a kind of a burnt grass and a bit of a yellow, more of a hair looking grass and uh, that really helped to sell the foliage. Then applied a few shields, uh, pre-painted. And then I clipped off the cocktail sticks because they were running a little bit long. And then I added a few craft beads to the ends of them. And stuck those on using a bit of no nails glue. Wasn't messing around with that one. And then using these two products, I mixed up a little bit of PVA glue with them and smeared it across a little bit of the barrier in the middle and up the stonework on the back and I added a little bit of black paint to the edges to neaten it up. Painted a few knights from my Bretonian collection from many many eons ago. And then finally added those to the diorama. Of course they can be removed as well. There we are, all finished. Um, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. I'm not really a diorama kind of person. Most of my terrain has to be playable and usable in many situations, very modular and things like that. I took a bit of an exception to this one because it was a competition piece. Um, but the reason it is, it is only the size that it is as well is because the competition states that it has to be made on a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter base or smaller. Uh, this one is smaller, I think it's 20 long and uh, about uh, maybe 12 deep or something. Uh, so it's it's well within the rules. But you know what, it is fairly cool. I could do some uh, interesting jousting tournaments and games and things. So yeah, it's, it should hopefully have a few uses in the future. And that'll do for this video. Uh, if you did like it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that little notification bell to get notified for any future videos. I have an Instagram set up if you'd like to check me out on there. I do uh, occasionally post 
the odd interesting, I think, uh, photograph from around the studio. I do have a Patreon set up as well, fairly recently. Um, I'm very, very thankful to my current patrons who uh, who give me their hard-earned cash. A small donation from each of them is uh, is more than I could ever ask for anyway. So thank you very much to you guys and uh, hopefully anybody else who, who signs up. But that's it for this one. That'll do for now. And I will see you again next time. Thanks for stopping by and happy crafting.